Hey there, you bunch of beanie babies. Welcome to today's Why Come No One Told Me That, which is my series where I go in depth on the different aspects of makeup and skincare. Today, we're gonna be talking about the elusive contour. Before we get started, I just wanted to say, is my hair at a really weird baby bird little chicky stage of growing out from my buzz cut? Yes. Am I going to film anyway and make you look at it? Yes, again. Okay, moving right along. So I always kind of mention that this series does build on itself, so it's good to go back and watch the other episodes that have preceded this one. Especially true in this instance is the segment that I did on contouring, or that's what this is, guys. The episode about bronzer, because I, I already addressed a lot of the information you're gonna need for contouring in that, and I kind of talked about what the differences are and so that information is going to be very relevant to this video and to spare you me and me saying everything twice just go back and watch it I'll put it in the description box make sure you do watch it I'll give a little recap in this video so we're not all totally lost because I meant that one a little while ago but it is it's a, they they are best friends and they want to be together. All right, so let's do like a little a little history of contouring lesson really quick and kind of talk about what it is and what it isn't and when we might want to do it to our faces. I have to say that as a makeup artist, I hear this word contouring so much more than I ever would have thought as a child I would be <laughs> hearing it and it seems to be like people really want to know how to do it. They're very intimidated by it and there's kind of like two schools of thought, right? Getting real academic up in this bitch today. So there's sort of the YouTube, Instagram, very heavy highlight and contour method um, where people uh, snatch each other's faces from what I understand. And then there's kind of the more natural, just light little sculpting here and there. I'm going to be teaching the latter method, but I'm gonna talk about both and explain why I'm doing that. So first of all, uh, I'm in a little, in between land of one, two feet in different worlds in the sense that I am a makeup artist professionally and I make YouTube videos on occasion. And there's like this weird conflict, right? <laughs> and I, I actually kind of can see and appreciate both. So I am definitely not dissing a, like extreme, we'll call it extreme contouring um, because I am a big proponent of whatever floats your boat and it's really fun. and. It actually has some cool roots that I'm gonna talk about in a second. The reason that I'm gonna be teaching sort of the latter method is I feel like that base is already really covered. Um, and it's also contrary to, like like when we're looking at people on the internet doing makeup, I feel like our, our sampling group is not necessarily indicative of just people in the world and how they wanna do their makeup. And so I think there's been a lot of coverage of how to do that type of contouring, but a lot of people that not aren't that aren't necessarily comfortable wearing that much makeup are also interested in contouring. So I'm going to cover some of that information so that people can do it and, you know, everybody has the info they need. So the origins of contouring for either method are pretty much the same and it really comes from from three different sources as I see it. So the first of those three and kind of like the OG of contouring development was theater makeup because when you're an actor on stage or a singer and everybody's far away in the audience you had to enhance your features so that they showed up and you didn't just look like a little little thumb. So people would use cream makeups to enhance their facial structure that way. That also then branched off into the other two, which would be makeup for film and television, because before we had super HD cameras, you had to apply makeup for film in a similar way. You had to make everything a lot warmer and you had to increase the contrast on people's faces a ton because camera quality didn't pick up all the detail that real eyeballs do. And so everybody would look really, really washed out and thumb-like. That Not looking like a thumb was a big part of early contouring. And it's actually a big part of my life <laughs> because I do look like a thumb. But anyway, so we had this mass of talented actors and singers on the stage, on film, that just didn't want to look like thumbs. And so makeup artists or the actors themselves would do contouring. And the third and easily most awesome expression of early contouring development and the one that has had the most influence on current beauty Instagram YouTube trends is drag makeup, which is obviously taking a male performer who wants to look female on the stage, 
and again that it's that actually is theater makeup as well technically speaking and that's like some of the most fun aspect of makeup application. I love drag makeup. I love doing drag makeup. And that's part of why I'm like, I can really appreciate when YouTubers do that style well because to blend everything and have it look really good is a skill that is hard to do and a lot of people cannot achieve it. The thing about that style of contouring though, as I kind of touched on before, is that it's dramatic and none of those applications were really intended for just like walking around in the daylight, just, you know, drinking your coffee. That said, if you want to go get coffee with your makeup like that, then God bless you. That's beautiful. Do it. Please, please don't let anybody shame you into feeling like you can't do that. What a shitty, stupid thing. The world has so many actual issues besides giving people crap about how much makeup they wear. So live your best life. And if you don't want to do that, now I'm going to give you some tips for this other branch of contouring, which is basically evolved from all of that as well. But makeup artists for like red carpet, for example, this is, was one of the big things, or just makeup artists as we realized that camera quality was improving and our techniques for the days of analog video were outdated because now when we needed to make people like way warmer than their skin tone and way more contoured, they were starting to look fucking crazy <laughs> on HD television. And we started scaling everything back. That's kind of how these trip, these tips started showing up in magazines. And then to kind of consumers a little bit around the same time that YouTube was starting, people started seeing, you know, like editors notes about like, here's some contouring tips, use a little bit of this ashy color and da, 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 da. And people started being like, wait, that's a thing that exists and I can do. So you can kind of water down the facial structure enhancement and adjusting to a point where it looks wearable. And that's what we're gonna kind of focus on. So with all that in mind, let's kind of talk about when you might wanna contour. And the answer to that is when the Venn diagram of you're not, just like feeling really lazy and you want to increase your bone structure a little bit, uh, overlap. And there's a sweet spot right there in the middle. Just continuing my streak of making just like a weird kind of sexual hand gesture in every video. Gotta squeeze it in somewhere. I come to the same conclusion with contouring that I do with most of what I teach you guys, which is once you understand the things here, the execution is really the the least of your worries. So for me, I usually contour a little bit if literally just what I said, like I'm not feeling like so lazy. And I'm also like, I feel like I've been a little more extra cute today for whatever reason. Then I'll do it because it truly takes like no time at all. All right. So I wake up and I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling it, the Venn diagram, it's happening. And let's talk about first some color option deciding info, what types of textures there are out there, what kind of tools we might wanna use. This is sounding pretty sophisticated. And then we'll do a little demo and talk about placement, yeah? You ready? I'm ready. So first of all, color options. This is where there's the whole bronzer contour thing going on, which I talked about extensively in my bronzer video but I will give you a refresher course right now. When your goal is to contour your face, so specifically to enhance your bone structure, like make your cheekbones look more pronounced, you're trying to replicate the shadows that naturally occur on your face because the way that eyeballs work when people look at you and see you is that light comes from different sources. I've got lights in front of me now. When you're outside, you get to the sun, right? And when an object obscures light, it creates a shadow. So we know that people have cheekbones and we know what size they are based off of how prominent the shadow is underneath them because it's basically, that shadow is indicating to people's eye message receiving computers that, hey, there's a bone here, it's blocking the light, there's a shadow. So people with more pronounced cheekbones have deeper shadows there, people with really like not a lot of facial definition there. They don't really have a shadow in that area because there's nothing to obscure the light. The visual qualities of shadows are that they are a little bit darker than the surrounding area and that they also are less saturated. There's a little more black in there. There's a little less vibrancy from the color that a light 
direct on an object would show. In a nutshell, that is why bronzers and contouring specific products are not always interchangeable, but sometimes they are. Bronzers are meant to replicate tans, and when your skin tans, it gets a little bit darker, but it also gets a little bit warmer. So there is overlap between the products in that both contouring products and bronzers are darker than your skin tone, but obviously one's gonna be cooler, less saturated, one is warmer. So basically you can get away with using a bronzer to contour if you're working within the context of a bronzed face. So if you're like, I wanna use bronzer for its purpose to make myself look tan, you can do that and you will get a natural contour from doing that because it is darker. What won't translate well is if you use a bronzing product just in contouring placement. So you're like, I'm not trying to replicate a tan. I'm not putting it everywhere that a tan would go all over my cheekbones, nose and forehead. I just wanna contour my cheekbones. So I'm gonna put where a shadow would be underneath my cheekbones. I'm gonna use my bronzer, which is warm. That is going to read as makeup on your face because people, they might not be able to put their finger on it, but when they look at you, they're gonna understand that there's product there and you're not, your cheekbone is not naturally looking that way. However, say you have a high forehead and you would like to make it look a little softer, more rounded and not so pronounced. When you bronze, and you cover, you know, you hit the areas of your forehead where a tan would hit, that will contour your forehead. And you don't necessarily need to use like an ashier contouring product in that location. And so bronzer is a perf, that's, that's one area that bronzer works just fine. So now that I've, I think, <laughs> turned my refresher course into almost a full recap of that bronzing video, let's talk about when you are actually picking out the color that you're gonna use if you're just talking about contouring. Basically, you're looking for something that's just a few shades darker than your natural skin tone, but is a little bit cooler and less saturated, just like a shadow, right? So for lighter skin tones, that's gonna be something that's a little bit ashy, kind of a taupe color. And as things get deeper, you wanna move away from ashiness, but still be on the cooler side of the spectrum. So foundations for dark skin tend to be kind of on a like, more red toned to more olive toned. You wanna stick to the more olive tones and that are in a, couple shades darker. Textures, so this is pretty much the same as what I've talked about previously. Some people just have a personal preference. I tend to prefer creams just in general for complexion products because I think that they blend a little more easily and also, you know, are more skin-like in their finish, but there's nothing wrong with powders either. I'm actually gonna be using a powder today. And really the main thing to keep in mind is just that if you want things to blend really easily, like blends with like, yes, You've heard it so many times now if you've already been watching this series, but it's true. So if, if it's hard to blend for you, then make sure if you're using a creamy type of product that you're blending on type on top of creamy types of products. Um, for example, today I'm gonna be using a powder contour, but I used creams for everything else. So in a moment when I demonstrate this, I'm gonna set my cream creamy products with a little bit of translucent powder first because it's gonna make it so much easier for me to blend that powder contour on top. Tools. I prefer to use brushes to contour, but I also use my fingers sometimes. The reason why I don't like a sponge is really just a matter of precision. So when I show you some placement things in a second, you'll see what I mean. But basically, I base my tools off of what texture product I'm using and what area I'm trying to blend upon. So when it comes to texture, creams and liquids are usually a little easier to blend with something that has like more densely packed, stiffer bristles. Whereas powders, it's a lot easier to control with something that's a little more flexible, maybe less dense. And then for placement, I really don't ever use any large brushes for contouring um, because I, again, I like to be precise. This is, you know, like a good size brush for contouring under the cheekbones, in my opinion. And then if I'm contouring somewhere like on someone's nose or in this area of the eyes or just within the eyes, because eyeshadow is actually a form of contouring in, in many respects, then I'm gonna be using a tinier brush. So today I'm gonna be using this guy to contour my cheekbones and tell you where to do that. So the first step in actually putting contouring products on your face is to talk about it more. <laughs> Aren't you guys like so jazzed that I am still not putting makeup on? I think that self-evaluation is really important when you're doing your makeup so that you can tailor things to your specific needs and in no area is this truer than in contouring. Just because there are all of these places you can contour does not mean you have to do that. For example, my nose is crooked, drives me insane. It's not a big deal, most people don't notice it, but I under no circumstances would ever contour my nose because if I contour my nose, it just super accentuates that. If I were gonna be on stage, then I could contour my nose because I could do it really heavily and people can't see me well enough to see 
my natural nose shadows. But if I'm trying to walk around with just like light shading on my nose, I'm just gonna have like dueling shadows. So one thing to keep in mind for this more subtle contouring that that you can pass off as your own face in person is it's not about adjusting your facial structure. It's really just like a way to naturally bump up your contrast, like a little Instagram filter for real life. You can't adjust things the way that you can if it's for a camera or for the stage or you're just bold. So let me just quickly walk you through some of the places that you can contour and then I'm gonna show you the the two places that I do contour in this way. So a really common one is to contour your forehead. Like I said, that's an area where bronzer is a really good way to do that because you don't necessarily wanna be putting something that's a cooler tone all over here because it might just look a little bit strange. That would be a time when I would use a larger brush for contouring, but I kind of put that in the bronzer category because like I said, that's an area that it makes sense if you just put a little warmth there. It's not going to seem strange to people because everyone's face is typically a little warmer around here because that's the spot that's getting hit with the sun constantly. So even if you are great about wearing sunscreen and you live in a basement, I'm sorry to hear that by the way, then it's going to be this is constantly getting hit with light. So it's natural for this to be a little bit warmer, makes sense to use bronzer, and you would just sort of beep, 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 dee, beep, 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 blur, blur. Oh, I forgot to mention. So I already did the rest of my makeup, obviously, but specifically, I already did like my bronzer and everything as illustrated in the bronzer video. Another place that you can kind of sneakily, stealthily, realistically contour is in your temples to kind of lift your eyes, and that, as is a secondary little side bonus, um, increases your cheekbone depth a little bit as well because it increases the contrast between these high points of your cheekbones and this recessed area. So let me just show you real quick. So I'm gonna use this relatively large for an eyeshadow brush, blending brush that I'm now using on my face and the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder. And I'm just going to tap off the excess. When you're doing this, you're imagining a line from the corner of your nose through the corner of your eye, extending upward. This is a technique that you definitely wanna be subtle about, like for sure super subtleties because it'll look super odd <laughs> if you don't. I just blushed Brenda Dunn onto my chin. It's fine, no one saw. So tapping off the excess, you can swirl off the excess on the back of your hand, whatever you need to do. Just remember with everything and then especially with contouring, you can always build more so it's nice to Start slow and then just like turn up the heat, right? Yeah, gross. So I'm gonna kind of go into my outer corner area of my face and then I'm just gonna brush upward, pretending there's a do 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 line. Yes, you will be brushing through your brow a little bit. It's the little tail, tickling his tail. <laughs> his, why are you a boy? Here's the part where I wonder to myself if this is showing up at all for you guys on camera. <laughs> this is gonna be what's known as an explanabrag, but I've spent my career trying to make makeup not noticeable on camera. So when I do YouTube, sometimes it's hard for me to gauge because I'm like, wait, I want you to be able to see what's happening, but also not make it look crazy and not give you guys the impression that just because I'm sitting here for five minutes dipping and blending that that's what you would need to do in person. Like this would, I would be done for sure if I was doing this for my own benefit. Let's just do this a couple times. Do, do. Can you see it? Can you see it? I'll do one more pass, just in case. And go way the fuck overboard. Cool job. <laughs> Obviously, you guys should listen to me. I'm an expert. Well, that's way beyond what I would do for my real life joy. But hopefully you can fucking see it. Okay. I'm gonna do maybe not as much on this side. <laughs> okay. Do do. Hello. Hello. Also in normal life, if I was doing this, I would not be doing it after all of my whole eye makeup is complete. I would be doing this like before I do my brows and my eye shiera. But yeah, so I'm just like soft little, little tail tickles. So just an update. This looks fucking crazy in person. Like it's very much noticeable. So that's how subtle you want to be because like maybe this is showing up for the camera or maybe it looks crazy on camera too. And my monitor's small so I can't actually see myself well enough to know the answer to that. But that's the placement and it looks really nice if you just, just do a little shh, shh, just really gives you that effect and who doesn't want 
effect, right? And next, the one that I actually do in life and that I go, I should do this more often. It's nice. I've seen some real wild placement out there in the Old West, and there's a simple rule of thumb that I learned from the great Ray Morris, who's such a G, and so great at the sneaky contour. It has nothing to do with sucking in your cheeks or anything like that, and it's simply you want to go from where the top of your ear meets your noggin down on the angle, like that there's a line connecting to the corner of your mouth, and you want to keep it like pretty thin. So I usually use like my little ear flappy. That is the scientific term. I'm a medical doctor. So I try to go down from the top of where my noggin meets to my ear flappy and then let them taper together to a point that ends somewhere around the outer corner of my eyeball. That just sounded like nonsense, I'm sure. Let me show you what I mean. So it's gonna be from here to here, about in width as it starts, and it's going to taper like a long, skinny, little pointy triangle, because we want it to end in nothing. So it's gonna get skinnier as it goes. And we want it to kind of taper off and end right around the outer corner of the eye, and it's going down an angle towards the corner of the mouth. I know I just repeated myself, but the reason is because I feel like I was describing something with words that's kind of visual and confusing, and maybe if I said it twice, it would help. <laughs> so I'm gonna load up my brush, and just kind of swirl off that excess. And then I'm just gonna go from right here, this little area I just talked about. And I'm gonna blend it out. And again, I'm doing this more intensely than, than in real life. Okay, I feel like you guys can see that. I'm gonna blend that more, but I just wanted you to see what I mean. So I'm like, I'm pretending like whoo, this angle, right? Whoo, but I don't wanna go all the way to my mouth because that would look strange. So I ended it right around this area, right? And I made it about the width of my to my ear flappy and I just like lifted my brush as I got closer to the end so that it tapers off and then now I'm just gonna like blend it a little more I did not put more product on the brush because this is already too intense for real life but I want you to see it and something to keep in mind when you're blending your contour in this area is it's it's better to blend up to soften than like all around or down because you don't want to be putting your contour really low because then that can look super weird so if you put it on and you want to blend it, I like to kind of like taper it up like this, right? Okay, so one side, contour side. Now I will do this side as well. So just kind of, and you, you want it to be the darkest towards the ear and have it get lighter as it gets closer to the center of your face. Am I getting the contour powder in my bleached blonde hair? Yes. Is a biohazard? Yes, biohazard <laughs> of having bleached hair, getting makeup in it, having it look gross and dirty, and then having to wipe it off after you put your makeup? Also, yes. So I placed it, let it taper off, and I'm just going to kind of like blend that edge up into my cheekbone. Bone. <laughs> Boning. Now just remove that from my little baby sideburns cute such a cute process growing out this buzz cut well bam so that's a horrible sound that i've made and also those are the only places i contour on myself if you want to contour your nose which is like tread cautiously if you're doing this like i said for the real life happenings and you're not doing a, a bold makeup look everywhere you're really just gonna go along the bridge of your nose, like on either side. Not even gonna try to show you, it looks ridiculous. There's no way around it. And also, just so you know, because like, I don't just do makeup on my own face, I do makeup on my own face the least <laughs> of anything. Even when I'm working on other people, I don't usually contour noses, unless it's like a full thing happening or they request it. It's not that I can't, it just does not feel like necessary in most cases. And then last, although I guess technically you could you could contour anything, you could contour your little weenus. Jawline, so you can soften your jawline if it's harsh and you don't like that by blending onto it a little bit. I don't mind that my jaw is this way, so I don't do that. And then if you want to enhance your jaw, you can go slightly underneath it. So if you're softening it, you're gonna be blending onto the edge 
and if you want to enhance it, you're going to be going just underneath. That's another one that can get into beard category super fast if you're not very gentle. <laughs> so I usually just don't even go there. Like, I, I feel like, in let me just get philosophical again for a moment. I think the reasons why I stick to here, here, here for contouring is because I'm really usually not trying to adjust anything so much as enhance things. And that's also just kind of part of my greater makeup belief system. I usually don't get too crazy with just like adjusting and tweaking like basic structure because I like people's faces even if they're not like oval shaped with the you know anytime I say this people are always like oh no because that's like our reflex but like I got teased sometimes as a teenager because I have kind of a little bit of a mannish situation here and that like hurt my feelings but now I'm like I actually like that feature and so I'm not really interested in like softening it you know and besides as part of the kind of overarching theme and important message of this video that I want you to take home it helps me not look like a thumb and at the end of the day that's all any of us really want you know so that's pretty much it if you've already watched a bunch of my videos and you're like cool thanks for repeating yourself I've heard this eight million times sorry about it if you're new here welcome and I'm sorry probably thank you all for watching please feel free to let me know your questions your concerns um, political beliefs in the comments and I'm excited to keep going with this series I know that I don't make videos enough I know that I talk about it and every time I apologize and it never changes and I'm sorry I'm trying to be better but I am truly excited about this so I'm um, after this one now we're gonna do a highlighting why come on my come no one told me that and then I'm gonna do one where I like bring all this face shit together and I show you how bronzer, contouring, blush, and highlight all work together like in one video like a bring it all together message so yeah that's what's in coming coming your way if you liked this video give it a thumbs up even though this has been a pretty anti-thumb video <laughs> i have to acknowledge that that's those are that's my own issue and don't forget to follow me on snapchat instagram and twitter at kiki g makeup and subscribe to this channel or else i will turn your family into thumbs okay all right i will see you guys later bye joy and i bed in the morning